بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين اما بعد tonight be in الله عز وجل i would like to divert a little bit from the subject that we have normally been reading from and that is the kitab al-dhikr wa dua of Shaykh Abdul Razak Ibn Abdul Muhsin Hafidhuhum Allah Ta'ala and I just want to read to you tonight Ibn Ilahi Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala a few words from one of the great scholars of Al-Islam scholars of Hadith scholars from the scholars who wrote about the aqeed of ahl sunnati wal jama'ah and that is Abu Bakr Muhammad ibn Hussein ibn Abdullah al-Ajuri rahimahullah ta'ala he has a kitab by the title of Guraba in which he brings the various narrations with their asanid concerning the different things that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned about the strangeness of al-Islam and the strangeness of the Muslims and the encouragement to hold fast to the religion of al-Islam and the truth even when you are outnumbered even when you are few in numbers and even when you are going through or suffering some type of fitna or persecution by way of the people of kufr and shirk and falsehood and misguidance innovation and whatever else it may be of those people who bring you problems imam al-ajuri rahimahullah ta'ala he said Concerning the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Bada al-Islam gariban wa sayyaud gariban kama bada Fatuba lil-gurabah In this hadith, well-known hadith In which the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Spoke very clearly and he said that Islam began As something that is garib, something that is strange and it will soon return to that strangeness as it began. He says, فَإِنْ قَالَ قَائِلٌ مَا مَأْنَا قَوْلِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ بَدَعَ الْإِسْلَامُ غَرِيبًا وَسَيَوْدُ غَرِيبًا كَمَا بَدَعَ He said, if a person was to say, what is the meaning of the statement of the Messenger of Allah, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, that Islam began strange, and it will soon return back to its strangeness. قِيلَ لَهُ It is said to him, كان الناس قبل أن يبعث النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أهل أديان أهل الأديان مختلفة. He said that the people before the sending of the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم were a people of many different أديان, many different religions and ways. يهود ونصارى ومجوس وعبد أوثان. And they were the Jews and the Christians and the Magians and the worshippers of idols and inanimate objects. فَلَمَّا بُعِثَ النَّبِيُّ صلى الله عليه وسلم كَانَ مَنْ أَسْلَمَ مِنْ كُلِّ طَبَقَةٍ مِّنْهُمْ غَرِيبًا فِي حَيِّهِ And when the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم was sent, then everyone from amongst these different religions that accepted Islam from every particular group and generation of those who have been mentioned here, they became strange in their localities. They became strange where they were. Gariban fi qabilatihi. They became strange with regards to their villages and their tribes. They became those who had to hide their Islam, some of them. قَدْ جَفَاهُ الْأَهْلُ وَالْعَشِيرَةِ 
Even their close relatives began to treat them harshly. And they became amongst those people who were looked down upon by those who were their relatives and their near ones and treated very bad. They were those who had to bear a lot of harsh treatment. Until Allah wa ta'ala elevated Islam, raised up Islam, gave Islam dignity, and increased the number of supporters of Islam. And Allah wa ta'ala allowed the people of truth to become triumphant, to become elevated. And the people of falsehood were subdued. فَكَانَ الْإِسْلَامُ فِي إِبْتِدَائِهِ غَرِيبًا بِهَذَا الْمَعْنَى And Islam in its beginning stages was strange by way of this meaning here. وَقَوْلُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَسَيَعُودُ غَرِيبًا And it will return back to its strangest, its meaning, وَاللَّهُ أَعْلَمْ أَنَّ الْأَهْوَاءَ الْمُضِلَّةِ That the desires that people have that are opposite of the sharia, that lead people astray, will be something that will increase. It will be something that will increase. And you will see many of the people following these particular ways. You will see many of the people being misguided by these particular ways. But, يَبَّقَى أَهْلُ الْحَقِّ الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَى شَرِيَةِ الْإِسْلَامِ غُرَبَاء فِي النَّاسِ And the people of truth, those who are holding on to the legislation of Al-Islam, you will find them becoming strangers amongst the people. أَلَمْ تَسْمَعْ إِلَىٰ قَوْلِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ تَفْتَرِكُ أُمَّةِ عَلَىٰ ثَلَاثِ وَسَبْعِينَ فِرْقَةً قُلُّهَا فِي النَّارِ إِلَّا وَاحِدَةً Having you not heard the statement of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that my ummah will split up into 73 sects, all of them in the hellfire except one. فَقِيل And it will be said, مَنْ هِيَ النَّاجِيَةِ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَفِي الْرِوَايَةِ مَنْ هُمْ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَفِي الْرِوَايَةِ The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said, هي الجماعة They are the جماعة أو ما أنا عليه وأصحابي أو ما أنا عليه اليوم وأصحابي Whoever is upon that which I am upon today and my companions. The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم, he mentioned this and this hadith has been collected or has come in many different turuq that strengthen each other. Imam al Jurri he goes on and he mentions, he says, فَهَذِهِ صِفَةٌ مِنْ صِفَاتِ الْغَرِيبِ الصَّابِرْ عَلَى دِينِهِ حَتَّى That this person or these individuals have these characteristics of the strangers, those who are patient upon their deen until they are safe and saved from ahwa al mudilla from those desires that lead people astray. He also mentions and he says, من صفات الغرباء أيضا from the characteristics of the strangers also التي نعت التي نعت بها أهل الحق أن يكون الغالب على الناس في جميع أمورهم. He says that also from the characteristics of the people who are strangers who have been described with these particular characteristics from amongst the people of truth is they are the people who are predominantly with regards to the affairs that they indulge in, mithlu, their relationship to one another as brothers, wa suhbat al-ashab, and the way that they accompany one another, wa mujawiratul jayran, wa siratul arham, wa iyadatul murid, wa shuhudul janaiz, and the way that they deal with their neighbors, the way that they keep the ties of kinship, the fact that they visit the sick, the fact that they uh, witness and they follow the janaiz or pray over the Muslims who died, you find that these are the people who implement these particular actions. More than the people of falsehood. The people who are strangers, they are the people who hold fast to these particular affairs here. And they are the people who receive from the people of the dunya, they receive hatred and enmity and all type of disrespect Ila and Qal, up into the Shaykh he mentions, he says, فَإِذَا أَرَادَ الْمُؤْمِنْ الْآقِلُ If the intelligent believer wants, الَّذِي قَدْ فَقَّهَهُ اللَّهُ أَزْوَجَلْ 
the one whom Allah Ta'ala has given understanding and fiqh in the religion, nafsihi, and he has allowed him to see his own deficiencies and faults, so this individual that's intelligent from the believers whom Allah has given fiqh in the religion and he has given him insight into his own defects and faults and he has opened up for him and allowed him to see what the people are upon and has given him the ability to recognize and make a distinction tamyiz bain al haq wal batil between truth and falsehood between that which is beautiful and that which is ugly between that which is beneficial and that which is harmful he knows what is for him from that which is against him this individual here who is holding fast to the truth bain al dhahranihi man qad jahil al haq bal al ghalib alayhim ittiba al hawa He's amongst the people who are ignorant of the truth. Rather, most of them only follow their desires. And they do not care what is a deficiency from their religion as long as their dunya is intact. As long as they have dunya, they don't care anything about the deficiencies in their religion. And when they see the person who has opposed them upon their way, he's not following the dunya. He doesn't care about the affairs of the dunya. This is something that weighs heavy upon them, and they begin to oppose him, and they begin to hate him, and they begin to disrespect him, and they begin to censor him. And they seek all of the type of faults in this individual. Up into the shaykh he says, this person becomes a stranger in his religion due to the corruptness of the religion of most of mankind, most of the creation. And he is garib in the way that he interacts and deals with the people due to the abundance of corruption in the way that the rest of the people are living. And he becomes a stranger in the way that he is a brother, and the way that he deals with the, the issue of brotherhood, and the way that he deals with accompanying those, of, those who are his companions due to the corruptness and the destructiveness of the companionship of the rest of the people. He is strange in all of the affairs of this life and the hereafter. He doesn't find anyone to support him or help him upon that. He doesn't find anyone who will assist him in this particular affair upon that path of striving upon the truth. He doesn't find anyone that will be a close, strong supporter or assistant in that particular path. Rather, this one is garib mustawhish li'annahu salih bayna fusaq. Because he is one who is trying to be upon uprightness and righteousness in his religion between a bunch of people who are fusaq, alimun bayna juhal. He is the one who has knowledge amongst the people who are ignorant. Halimun bayna sufaha. He is the one who has forbearance for the people who treat him ignorantly and deal ignorantly towards him. Yusbihu hazin and kathiru gummihi. He becomes the type of person that he grieves and he worries. Qalilun farhi. He has a little bit of joy and happiness as if he is a prisoner and he cries a lot based upon what he sees around him of the facade and the corruption and the ittiba'ul hawa and the following of desires al-ajuri rahimahullahu ta'ala he says fahada ma'ana qawlihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَسَيَعُودُ غَرِيبًا كَمَا بَدَى وَاللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ أَعْلَمْ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. This is a very beautiful statement from one of the a'imma of the salaf, رَحِيمُهُمُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ One of the imams of the past. And many people today, they believe that strangeness is in the way that you dress. Strangeness is in your Islamic name. 
Strangest is in the fact that you have a beard. Strangest is in the fact that your wife wears a niqab. Strangest is in the fact of all of these particular things that the people ascribe to today that yes, are a part of the religion. Yes, are a part of people who are mutadayin or upon istiqama. But the true strangeness is holding fast to the truth. Holding fast to that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed and that which his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was upon and that which those first and foremost of the pioneers of Islam were upon as Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala used to say alaykum bi amr al-atiq it is upon you to be upon the old way the ancient way that is the true strangeness the one who accepts Islam in this country and his family looks at him strange because of his belief not because he wears an izah or a thobe or he has a beard not because his name is Abdul Rahim now, for the fact that he no longer thinks that Isa والسلام, is the son of Allah, or rather even Allah. Gharib because of this. Gharib because a person. He comes from Bangladesh, or he comes from Pakistan, or he comes from India, or he comes from Syria, or he comes from Egypt, or he comes from Lebanon, or wherever he comes from. And no longer he practices the cultural practices that were in opposition of Islam. West Africa, Mali, Ghana, Senegal, Congo, wherever it may be, Burkina Faso, no longer practicing those superstitions, no longer implementing those cultural practices that were opposite of the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. This is how a person becomes strange. This is how a person becomes gari. And these are the people that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam were talking about when he said "Tuba lil Gurabā." Tuba, a tree in paradise, is for the people who are Gurabā. No longer does he believe in this Afrocentricism that the black man is God, that the black man is better than the white man, that there's some type of elevation or liberation for only the black race and everyone else is under them. No longer does this individual who is of Caucasian descent believes that the Caucasian race is better than the black race or the red race or the yellow race or whatever it may be because of his Islam. He becomes strange amongst those people. Strange. And this is the true meaning. This is the time that we are in, brothers and sisters, brothers. We're in a time of zamanul gurba. We're in a time of strangeness. Not necessarily because the signs of Islam that a person doesn't know when they see a woman with a head cover on that that's a Muslim. That when they hear this call, that's the adhan. That they see us praying the way we pray, that's not strange. The fact of the matter is our aqidah. Our aqidah is that which makes us strange. Not just the fact that we're just people who say that we're Muslim. Holding on to the aqidah that is correct. Worshipping Allah wa ta'ala upon at tawheed purely. No calling on the awliya, no calling on the so-called wali, no calling on the shaykh, no calling on the person in the grave. Understanding reality that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is alone. He is the one who should be worshipped. He is the one who should be made dua to. He is the one who should be slaughtered for. He is the one who should be the one goes to for all of their affairs to cure them from sicknesses, to bring them out of trials and tribulations. He no longer fears anyone from the creation. This is what makes a person strange. Many of the people today who ascribe to the sunnah or ascribe to the manhaj of the salaf, they believe that they're strange, but they're only strange in what? In superficial things. With regards to the heart, the spirituality, what is on the inside, there is no strangers, they are no different than they were before they accepted Islam. They're the same person in the way that they believe and think before they accepted Islam. True strangers and when you change your thoughts, and when you change your heart, and when everything in your soul and your heart and desires are inclined to, and on the straight path, and in conformity to, what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with. This is the stranger. Not giving yourself an description with a yav nisbah on the end of it, wherever it may be. All right? The strangest is at tawheed. The strangest is at sunnah. The strangeness is the methodology of the companions. Abu Bakr Siddiq, Umar al Khattab, Uthman ibn Affan, and Ali ibn Abi Talib as the best and the head of them, then all of those companions that were companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam So we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to make us strange And to allow us to abandon the dunya In those affairs in which Take us away from the religion Seek your dunya Earn a living Take care of your family But do not allow the life of this world To take you away 
How long do you think you have left? How long do you think you have left? 40 years old. You have 20 years, 30 years, maybe. No doubt about it. After that, most likely, Sittin Sabain from the Ummah of Muhammad, khalas, is over. Then what? Then what? We need to start really reflecting upon this. We need to start really putting things away for that time, for the time when we're laying on that table and someone is washing our body and someone is wrapping us in those white sheets and someone is praying over us and someone is putting us in that dirt. I don't think we think about that enough. I don't think we think about that enough. You need to remind yourself of that. And if you can't remind yourself enough, then you need to seek out the janais and go pray over the people. Seek out the places where the bodies are being washed and go wash the bodies. Then maybe you'll reflect that that's going to be me. No doubt about it one day. No doubt about it. So we ask Allah wa ta'ala to protect us from falling into those things that distract us from his worship. From falling into innovations. From believing that there is any guidance, any way, any methodology, any belief system better than the belief system of, of Al Islam and the methodology of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wallahu taala alam bil sawab. Wassalallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wasallam.